Okay, another volume example. Um, region above bounded by y equals x squared and y equals 2x. So we have 2x on top right here. I'll do that in green. That's really kind of bad, but close enough. And x squared is the parabola right here on the bottom. Okay is the base of the solid S if the cross section is perpendicular to the y axis. Okay, that's the important thing right here. Our squares, what is the volume of the solid? So if I were to attempt to draw this, again, lay this back side flat a little bit so you can sort of see what's going on, um, we would get this sort of shape. Okay, and the squares are perpendicular to the y-axis now. So if I take a planar cut through here, so a nice vertical plane back there, the squares are perpendicular to the y-axis. So now the way that I've laid this out, we can see all of the squares. A similar shape to last time, but not the same, not necessarily the same. Okay? So we know that, like last time, this right here is going to be my side length. Okay? And I'll put S. There's a slight difference in the formula I'm using since instead of going from going along x's, making the cuts this way vertically, I'm making the cuts horizontally here. So I'm actually going to move this starting at zero and then going all the way up to four. And I can solve those out and we see where they'll hit, but we can see it from the graph. We'll we'll leave it at that. So I know that a different formula integral from a to b of some area function, but the side length now, since I'm making a horizontal cut, will change as my y values change. So I didn't write this out in the first video, but this is an equally valid way to find volumes as I'm changing y values. And it still means the same thing. This is going to be the base area, this is going to be the cross-sectional area, and this is going to be an infinitesimally small height to get me the volume. Okay, so we have a few things to do. We know that this side length starts on this blue curve and ends on this green curve over here. Unfortunately, um, this side length is a change in x, and these are both functions in terms of x. They're both functions of y in terms of x. So what's going to happen first off, I need s because I know that my area in terms of s, since it's a square, is going to be s squared. But these are both in terms of x, that, and if I subtract them, I'm getting a y height, not an x distance. So I have to solve both of these equations for x, which actually isn't too hard. I made them pretty easy. So the first one, we had y equals 2x, and that means x is equal to y divided by 2. That's not too bad. The second one, we have y equals x squared. And I, I go ahead and I solve for y here. And I only care about what happens in the positive x's. So I don't need a plus or minus here. I just need x equals the square root of y. So I'm actually I'm sort of taking this region out because it doesn't really matter for the problem. I'm not using that as any endpoint. And this s will equal, and I, I use the term top function in the previous video, but in this one, the bigger function isn't actually on top the way we usually like it, but it's farther out. It's more positive. The bigger function is the blue function, so I have the square root of y 
minus the smaller function, half of y, or y over 2. Okay, and I know that my area in terms of s is s squared, and so I can find my area in terms of y, which I need for my formula down here. My area in terms of y will equal the square root of y minus y over 2 squared, which will equal, I'll do it over here to save some space, I don't have that much room down here, which will equal um, this squared, which gives me y squared over 4, minus 2 times both of these terms, which will give me, um, it'll give me y root y, so minus y root y, I'll, I'll put that in for a second, y root y. Um, more than a second, we'll get back to that, um, and then plus this term squared, which is going to be y. Now, this y root y term, really going to be a pain to try to get the antiderivative of the way it's written, but this is just, um, so let's see, let me do it over here, y root y, which is y times y to the one half, which we know is y to the 3 halves when we add the exponents. So this area is going to equal y squared over 4 minus y to the 3 halves plus y. Okay, into our volumes. So the volumes we already set from 0 to 4. You could solve to see where these two are equal and you would get 0 and 4. So the volume will equal the integral from 0 to 4. My area in terms of y is right here, so I'll put that in, y squared over 4 minus y to the 3 halves plus y, and then in terms of y. And now I just need to evaluate this. So first off, take the antiderivative, and that's going to give me, I have a y cubed, and I divide out by 3, so y cubed, and the over 4 and the over 3 become over 12, minus, I add 1 to get 5 halves, so I have a y to the 5 halves, and I divide by 5 halves, so I get a 2 fifths. And then I add 1 which, to the exponent, which gives me 2, so I get a y squared over 2. And I evaluate this from 0 to 4. I love these zeros. They make our job slightly easier. And so we'll keep going. Calculators are for chumps. So we put in the 4, and I'm going to get... 4 cubed over 12. I wish it were 4 times 3, then they would cancel out to 1, but not quite so good here. All right, y to the 5 halves. That is the, so 4 to the 5 halves. I'll, I'll write it in. We'll go over it in a second. And again, when I say a second, I really mean about 30 seconds. To the 5 halves times 2 fifths, and then... 4 squared over 2. Okay. 4 cubed is 64. Divided by 12, I take out um, a factor of 4, so I will get 16 over 3. Minus. 4 to the 5 halves. Well, I can first do the square root of 4, so let me write this on the side. I'm going to deal with this right over here, and I'll get the square root of 4 to the fifth power. I have a positive base, so it doesn't actually matter what order I do things in, and I get um, 2 to the fifth, which we all know is 32. Ooh. Times 2 is going to give me 64 over 5, and 4 squared is 16 divided by 2 is 8, so plus 8. 
As with last time, my common denominator here happens to be 15. I don't know if that's always the case for going things in X and Y, but it seems to work here. So multiply top and bottom of here by 5, so I get 80 thirds, I'm sorry, 80 fifteenths. Multiply the top and bottom here by 3, so let's see, 64 times 3, well 60 times 3 is going to give me 184 times 3, so I get 192 over 15. And this use 15, 15, multiply 15 over 15, so plus 8 times 15 is 120 um, over 15. This looks familiar, it actually might even be an AP Calculus pro um, problem from a previous test, but let's see, so 80 plus 120 is 200 minus 192 gives me 8 fifteenths, and I'll check that before I upload it, but it's right. Okay?